Before I even start this video, I want you to pause it, go down into the comment section, and answer this question. Should Toyotaro cover the Broly arc? Should we give him a chance? Know your place, worm. Prepare yourself. Damn Saiyan. Now this video is going to be more off the cuff, it's going to be more ranty, it's my genuine thoughts on if Toyotaro should cover Dragon Ball Super Broly because as of right now, he's not. He's going straight into the prisoner arc and he's completely skipping over Broly. Now, when Toyotaro was first announced to be essentially the successor to Akira Toriyama, there was a lot of praise in the community especially the Dragon Ball fan manga community because remember Toyotaro started out as one of the great Dragon Ball fan manga creators he created Dragon Ball AF and because of his great work in that manga they picked him up and put him on the Dragon Ball Super manga and let him roam free through that story but as we all know it's not roses and daisies when you go into a huge company like Shueisha and try to create your own thing you have to go by time restraints and different aspects of the job that change the way that you tell a story and the main one of these is the fact that Akira Toriyama created two movies Battle of Gods and Resurrection of F and then decided to have the anime cover these two movies as well and the manga covered at least Battle of Gods. They completely skipped over Resurrection of F, realizing that it's much better just to jump right into the Universe 6 arc. And by the time that the Universe 6 arc in the anime was coming to a close, the manga needed sort of to catch up to it. So that's exactly what happened. And unfortunately, it's not Toyotaro's fault because he needed to follow exactly the story of the movies to a certain extent. And it's not like it's his fault as much as it is, say, the anime people's fault, the anime creators, because they were also on this constraint. Because Toyotaro's involvement throughout the rest of the Dragon Ball Super manga has mainly been dictated by what the anime and the movies have covered, and also where they are in the storyline, at least from my perspective. And there are certain changes that I do like in the manga, and there are certain changes that I do not like and have really glossed over from the manga and those I've been very vocal about. I mean one of them is that Ultra Instinct is learned by Master Roshi. Um, Goku learns it via seeing Master Roshi do like the poor man's version of it. And I like the fact that Master Roshi has uh, some knowledge in this technique but having this technique just be learned like that what's to stop master roshi opening up a school where he teaches everybody ultra instinct you know it just opens up more questions than it answers and honestly we still haven't gotten an answer to ultra instinct at all and the tournament of power arc is almost done and we don't know if we're gonna see ultra instinct again although if they don't mention it at the end of the next chapter i believe it's chapter 42 that Goku can't go into Ultra Instinct anymore, I'm pretty sure Toyotaro is going to use Ultra Instinct as that one technique that saves Goku every time he's about to be defeated. I feel like that's the direction he's going to go into because I know what Toyotaro is. Toyotaro is a Dragon Ball fan manga artist, so he's going to take really good ideas from the community from the other creators and incorporate them into his own story. Now I like the Universe 6 version of the manga. I like the way that it was paced. I like the art and the fights of it. I just had an issue with how badly Hit was nerfed. That was my only critique really from that. But besides that, it's a pretty solid arc. I was really excited to see exactly what Toyotaro was going to bring to the table when it came to this manga, this manga arc, and I was not really disappointed. I was excited to see what he was going to do with Goku Black, and I'm telling you right now that Goku Black, the Goku Black arc in the manga is the pinnacle of what Toyotaro has done up to this moment because he has made the Goku Black arc in the manga far more exciting, far better than even the anime version and I love the anime version but in my opinion he had so much input 
and had so many good positive changes, he made Merge Zamazu an actual fighting force and machine that it's hard to fault the guy for making certain changes down the line thinking that oh maybe the fandom's gonna be positive on these because they were positive in the Goku Black Arc ones. And the Goku Black Arc, it felt like it lasted a long time. And I feel like that was also a constraint from the anime because the anime was going into the Torn of Power and he needed to have sort of like this arc stretch out a little bit more because you can't just add filler into a manga, at least you shouldn't. And right now, up to the Tournament of Power, in the anime, we had Dragon Ball Super with a couple of filler episodes, especially the really good ones with hits. So I think that's the reason that the manga version of, of the Goku Black Art was stretched out for so long. But at the same token, I think that that was to its benefit because it was an arc that needed more stretching out and needed us to dive into it a little bit more. And he did a superb job, at least in my opinion. Some people don't like this, but I really do. Now let's go ahead and jump into popular opinion here because the Tournament of Power arc in the manga is far inferior than it was in the anime and that's not really the manga's fault because the, you guys have to remember man i feel like a lot of people don't remember the hype that was the anime and the dragon ball community going into that november i believe it was october november when we first got the first whiff of ultra instinct when we first saw it in episode 110 if you guys don't remember that hype, then you guys are kidding yourselves here because it was like the Dragon Ball community was on this surreal high. Nothing could change the way that we were feeling. It was definitely memorable. It was akin to some of the greatest moments in, say, other genres, music, art, movies. It was definitely in that category. And the Tournament of Power in the anime wasn't really that spectacular, but because there were certain beats and moments that made it over the top, it was worthy of being called a Dragon Ball treasure. Everything that we saw leading up to episode 110 is a fucking Dragon Ball treasure or national treasure, but I'm saying Dragon Ball treasure because we need to treasure some of these moments. And when I think back on that year when Dragon Ball Super was coming to a close and we get Ultra Instinct, Master Ultra Instinct, Jiren, all this hype, that's what I'm going to remember. I'm not going to remember Goku Black Arc besides the fact that that's when I first started my channel. I'm not going to remember the Universe 6 arc besides that was the first time that I realized that the anime could actually be good. Because up to that point, it was retelling Battle of Gods and Resurrection of F in a shittier way than the movies did. So, it is a lot to put on somebody's shoulders to try to even touch that hype and nostalgia Unfortunately, Toritaro couldn't do it, and I don't think anybody could, honestly. I don't think that anybody could bring the hype level in the manga as close to it as it was in the anime. There's absolutely no way. And so, that gives him a pass on that, on the lowered expectations you have to have to go into the Tournament of Power arc. It doesn't give him an excuse for some of the other changes that just don't make any sense. A lot of the power scaling that makes no sense and a lot of the stuff with Ultra Instinct that unfortunately it doesn't it's not that it doesn't make any sense it just it falls flat and it's boring it doesn't even reach close to the hype levels as the anime unfortunately and of course they're two different mediums but they are the same arc and they're told two different ways and obviously the anime version is going to be superior because of that hype level that we all had and it's also it's got some good beats it's got some better beats than the manga version of it. So unfortunately, Toyotaro really only has the Goku Black art as a credit to his name at this point. He doesn't have really much else besides maybe Battle of Gods being all right, Universe 6 being better, and then Goku Black being spectacular. And now we have Tournament of Power, which was mediocre. And so let me dive into this question. Should Toyotaro cover the Broly arc? in manga form. You guys know that I have converted my channel a few months ago to more of a Dragon Ball fan manga channel. I still cover normal Dragon Ball stuff but I'm more into the fan manga aspects of the community because that was what rebuilt my fire into Dragon Ball again because I was waning down after the Tournament of Power. I was like, you know what? It was so good 
and I had some issues at the end of it, but it was so good that right now we're not gonna get anything till Broly, and I don't want to beat Broly like a dead horse. And then the manga, or the Dragon Ball fan manga community stepped up and started introducing me to some of these different concepts, and I just fell in love. Toyotaro is one of those artists, and he got a chance, a, a chance that Dragon Ball fan manga creators would kill for, and that is to be the successor to Akira Toriyama. And with Akira Toriyama's trust in him, and even though I think that other artists could do a good job as well, other creators could do as equally or better job, maybe like Young Gigi, I do think that we need to give him the benefit of the doubt. I think that this prisoner arc, Galactic Patrol prisoner arc, looks like it's going into an extremely interesting situation. We are getting a similar mystery as to who the hell is Goku Black. Now is, why the hell do they need the old Supreme Kai out of Majin Buu or Fat Buu? That's the question and I think Dragon Ball is at its best when it's trying to answer a question. When it's got a mystery at the beginning. Similar to how great the Cell Arc and the Androids were. And we had, that was probably the best mystery that we had so far. And then we had Goku Black which was amazing also. So I think that he's gearing up and going into this. He's happy and he's excited because he's making something that hasn't been made before. He can tell it his way. The only way. And as a creator. Uh, I mean I'm not a creator. Not yet anyway. But as creators. I would imagine that they would want to tell their own stories and tell other people's stories. And so with that being said, should he do Broly? I think that we should give him the benefit of the doubt and let him tell the Broly story at some point the way he wants to tell it. But he needs to finish this Galactic Patrol prisoner arc the way he wants to. Rebuild that fire into his heart and have that excitement for Dragon Ball again because I feel like the Tournament of Power killed a lot of it. And then, if he wants to cover Broly somehow, putting him into the story, then he can. If he wants to meld these two arcs together in some way and tell his own version of Broly, that would probably be better because the Dragon Ball manga, Dragon Ball Super manga, and the Dragon Ball Super anime, two completely different universes. Parallel universes. They don't need to match. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on this. Let me know in the comment section below what you answered to this question. Do you give your faith to Toyotaro or do you think that he should just continue with his arc and forget about Broly? This is going to be Blackscape signing off. Take care guys.